Shalom, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and very, very serious situation that is happening uh, in North Korea as well as Ukraine. I uh, want to kind of bring you up to speed on some things that we've been watching here. North Korea ICBM lands in Japan's economic zone, according to officials uh, that is coming out of the U.S. State Department uh, of De or the U.S. Department of Defense. Their own website, as they speak about this, this they, they posted this today on the uh, Department of Defense website. The North Korean intercontinental ballistic missile that was launched on July 28th from Mup Young Ni traveled about 620 miles before splashing down in the Sea of Japan, about 103 miles from the coast of. Uh, Hakadoya, Japan, the Pentagon Director of Press Operations said today. Now that's really uh, putting the, the tensions on the United States uh, to do something about Kim Jong Un. Uh, and another, uh, right after, of course, the ICBM went off, the United States also showing its own force with South Korea, uh, working on exercises together there, just last minute exercises says here in the upi.com north korea accuses us of preparing for nuclear war uh, because the us took a b1 b bomber right along with the south korean f-15 fighter jet there and was flying uh over the sea of japan there not too far from the north korean border there letting north korea know that the us has definitely got south korea's back in these latest tensions but the question is really is it south korea or is it the united states mainland that is the most concerned in this particular latest provocation there uh, also, Japan and the U.S. pledged to take firm action against North Korea. Even the Japanese are very concerned about what North Korea's capabilities are with these nuclear uh, weapons because Japan, of course, is definitely uh, within striking range. But, of course, uh, latest uh, technical information coming out about that latest ICBM that was really a surprise for the United States. It was launched from an uh, undisclosed location and from, a, uh, from an area that had not been used before by North Korea. So the U.S. is very concerned about that. And, uh, and of course, Japan also concerned about these tensions that are rising there with North Korea. Uh, another interesting statement also from Business Insider uh, that just came out as well. This came out, uh, well, it's been about eight hours ago today, after the U.S. had shot, uh, had a shot at taking out Kim Jong-un, North Korea changed its launch tactics. That was a statement that came out, like I said, here on Business Insider today. According to the article here on Business Insider, the United States actually had about a 70-minute window where they were actually watching the last ICBM launch they were watching Kim Jong-un walking around uh, at the site of where the missile was launched there. And the U.S. could have actually taken him out just by targeting that site there and did not do so. Well, Kim Jong-un, he caught wind of that information and he has since changed the way the missiles are launched. One, they did it at night. Secondly, they had several look-alikes actually out there uh, where the missile was being launched. So the question is, is was Kim Jong-un actually there or not? My guess would be he wasn't actually there at all this time. He's not taking any chances of being assassinated by the U.S. Uh, fool me once, but definitely you won't be fooling him twice. Uh, in other news as well, U.S. detects highly unusual North Korean submarine activity, according to CNN and some of the sources that they have there saying highly unusual activity of North Korean submarines there. Very troubling information coming out of this region there. Then we're running into this situation here. USA Today, United States malls arming Ukraine as Russia. Russian menace grows near NATO border. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. They say a Russian menace grows near NATO's border. Uh, I can't say it's actually NATO's border, but one thing's for sure, on Ukraine's border, Russia is arming up and getting ready as well, just as the U.S. has been doing. It is certainly a tit-for-tat situation, and so therefore, U.S. talking about arming uh, Ukraine with some anti-tank ballistic uh, missiles, etc., some as the U.S. calls it, very lethal weapons. The Kremlin has warned the U.S. against supporting Ukraine with weapons. This came out on the NewYorkPost.com today. 
And of course, as we mentioned here, uh, this is some of the images here, right here, that we're seeing of uh, U.S. military equipment here being uh, that's inside of Poland, but it's very close to uh, the Ukrainian border there. I want to share some of that, share with you just exactly where this military equipment was at uh, inside of there. We'll jump over here to Google Maps here. As you can see right here in Poland, down here in the southeastern corner, no reason to be there other than Ukraine itself. And if President uh, Trump is actually going to be giving some lethal weapons to Ukraine, it could be that they're bringing those weapons up close to deliver to Ukraine, uh, or maybe they're getting ready for something else altogether. Uh, that kind of brings us over here to what our good friend Lorenzo had already happened is bringing out. And he is showing that various military vehicles, including the Masta S. Howitzers, spotted today in Voronoza Oblast near the border with Ukraine. Now that's Russian howitzers that we're speaking about right here. And jumping back over here at our Google Maps here, let's just kind of put this in perspective. That happens to be right here. Voronoz is right here in this region here. They're saying you know, it's close to the border, and Varanaz, by the way, does go, the, the whole oblast region here goes all the way down here to the border of Ukraine there uh, on the northern side of Luhansk. And as we saw in the uh, photographs there, shared by Lorenzo here, and I just said we can't blow this up a little bit for you there, make it a little bit bigger so you can see what, he's, what Lorenzo is showing here on the screen here. We're talking about Russian howitzers. I kind of counted them in there. You got four across here on the back and in this row here. So that's eight. And then you've got at least two from what I can make out there. So it looks like there's 10 howitzers here that were spotted there uh, in this region here at a railroad track there. Uh, Russian howitzers there, not too far from Ukraine's border there. Very serious situation going on in there. And what's this all about? Well, as you can see here, coal. Uh, not only coal, but natural gas as well. This is what all came down when Yanukovych was president of Ukraine. He wanted to be part of the European Union, but part of that was Catch-22. If you're going to be part of the European Union, you got to cut ties with Russia because we're not going to let you deal with Russia and get the gas. It's going to be supplied by the U.S., uh, uh, your energy needs, including that of the coal needs, etc. And that was just something that wasn't going over too well uh, for for uh, Yanukovych, he did want the cake and eat it too. He wanted to be part of the European Union, but he liked the good relationship that he had with Russia, not to mention the coal was much cheaper. Well, the United States did supply Ukraine with coal after this all went down with Russia, uh, and, they, and the conflict of the, of the, of the uh, Maidan coup was actually was orchestrated by, as some are claiming, by the CIA. And of course, what do we have here? Uh, the U.S., they first gave the coal at about $69 uh, a ton. Now it's up to triple that amount, even nearly double what Sweden is paying for it. So as it was stated, when we brought this out earlier on in our news when we were covering the war in Ukraine, uh, the U.S. has certainly made some bucks off of Ukraine, and uh, the people there are the ones that have to pay the bill. So they're going to be suffering for this wonderful uh, war that has been going on. Uh, also earlier we had reported about the ammo blast and the uh, Balkia destroys ammunition worth one billion dollars. Do apologize on that. that. That is a two month old article when we actually went to the source of this but it still does stand to reason this is one of the, the very causes no doubt that has uh, intensified U.S presence and willingness to arm Ukraine's government against Russia. Because of such a major loss in weapons, they've got to restockpile what they've already sold to Ukraine in the past, uh, and that was a major loss for them. So I can certainly see how that's going to be. And as I stated before, the New York Times, Putin responding to sanctions, orders U.S. to cut diplomatic staff by 755 personnel. Uh, well, you know what, guys? That is a lot like a pre-war preparation, if you ask me. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, this coming weekend we'll be in Duluth, Georgia. We are looking to run this uh, particular conference live. I think you're going to want to be a part of it. You're not going to want to miss that conference there. Uh, we still have some tickets available. Go to the website. I believe it's globalversusflatearth.com. Versus is VS in there, global, G-L-O-B-A-L, 
uh, vsflatearth.com. Register, get your tickets while there's still a few left there. We are looking at running this uh, broadcast live, including the debate between Dr. Stephen Pigeon and Zen Garcia. Uh, we're going to try to get YouTube Live set up, so hopefully right here on Israeli News Live on YouTube, we'll get that set up. We did stop at B&H in New York when we first landed there. Uh, we took the liberty to go ahead and purchase the equipment that would help us to be able to do that so that we could bring this conference live to you. That would also include bringing live Yana Benoon and her message on vaccines and transhumanism, as well as uh, uh, Laurel Austin, uh, Zen Garcia, Stephen Pigeon, and myself on Sunday. We're going to be speaking about the Middle East prophecy, things that are going on there. We're going to try to bring as much of this conference to you as live as much as we can. And of course, your support in making that happen is definitely needed. Uh, the tickets for the event will, will not even cover the cost of getting the guests there to the conference. So we're going to have to kind of foot the bill for that ourselves. And of course, the equipment to help bring this to you live is also very expensive. Uh, but we wanted to do that because we wanted to try to bring this to you live. And so be watching for it here on Israeli News Live uh, on YouTube here. Don't know if we'll run it on Israeli News Live live stream or not. We're going to try to main, uh, make sure we can get it on one or the other, but we're going to try to do it here on YouTube where the largest audience would be able to see this. So anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If you'd like to help support that, support that work, go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. There's a donation button there. If you're watching this on Israeli News Live on our YouTube channel, there's a uh, do donation link right above the subscribe button. Your help and support and all that we're trying to do is greatly support, uh, appreciated. And we also are planning a little small conference, a half-day conference in Orlando, Florida. Uh, that'll be later in the month of, uh, probably late in the month of August. Haven't set a date for that as of yet. We're going to try to work on some details for that. So if you'd like to be able to come to that, send us an email, stephenbenoon at gmail.com. Shalom.